Hello, and welcome to the 2 Big Game Club. I'm your host, Liam Gallagher, and I am joined by... Allie! So, Allie, we're playing Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town. This is the third episode. Yeah. What can you tell our audience about the 2 Big Game Club? What is it? Uh, the 2 Big Game Club, it's like a book club, but for video games. Also your number one source of turnips. <laughs> so, every month, uh, you choose a game, and you play through it, you do some let's plays, and um, then you and your friend Brooke, who is a video game developer, talk about it on podcast, and you hold a discussion group in Toronto, Ontario. Absolutely. So you can find us on the web at 2biggameclub.com. We tweet at 2biggameclub, and we're on Facebook and Twitch and all that stuff at uh, slash 2biggameclub, and that's all with a number two. Not T W O, yeah. not T O, not T O O, but the uh, backward S not looking. Not T U. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not T O U. It's a word I made up. Um, uh, the proper backward S looking Arabic numeral that's right next to the number one and three, and I believe above W on the keyboard. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. Um, so from what I understand, you talk about video games, and you try to uh, give them a measure of analysis. Yeah, so this is video game criticism. So there's a lots of places where a guy will shout while playing video games, and act like he's really excited to be selling turnips. Though, it is very exciting. Yo, it's your boy Liam Gallagher coming Yo. at you with turnip. Uh, selling speed run. We're gonna give you the top 59 tips on how to make money off of turnips in uh, Harvest Moon Friends Mineral Town. Uh, tip number uh, 59: uh, Turnips are the are white. Uh, I can't I can't take any more of this. <laughs> You're gonna have to stop me there. Yeah. Uh, oh, put that back in your bag, bud. You need to take that to the harvest goddess. Ooh. We gotta pay our tithe. Yeah. Tithe slash courting. Kind of one and the same right now. Blood sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. You said no blood. Well, turnip blood. Does that count? Um, turnip blood, Irish heart? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the song? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> you, you got it. <laughs> got it in one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... So you're watering some potatoes, I see. Some patat. Patats. Yeah. Hey, you have cucumbers now. Yeah, I have, I have, did I plant them? I don't think you did. Yeah, yeah you did. did. Oh, you did, yeah. So you only had one bag, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so we, the whole idea here is we're looking at games from, like, a game design and game development and game history sort of perspective. So this is a good place to come if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how games are made or what sort of choices go into making them, as well as learning about um, uh, the history of important games. So we're not just playing um, uh, Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town to uh, cash in on the retro game, uh, you know, nostalgia love. Uh, we're also playing it. Uh, for its merits as a <laughs> piece of video game history. Um, a lot of people think about Friends of Mineral... Mineral where is my map? <laughs> Mineral <laughs> Town being... Uh, no! <laughs> Wrong map. Two big maps. There we go. Where's the dog? Dog! Ugh. There he is. Too far away. Screw him. Um, <laughs> Poor Dombell. Yeah. Oh, we got more money. We just blow it all on cucumber. Yeah! Um... We're playing this game because it uh, a lot of critics and a lot of fans of the Harvest Moon series think that this game is the quintessential... We might not be able to go to the grocery store because it's Saturday. Oh, let's see. I forget the calendar. All the shops have their own yeah, little schedule. Um, oh, you're good. Um, and they think that this is the Harvest Moon game to play. And Harvest Moon is, of course, a uh, beloved series. Um, and so we're trying to get to the bottom of what makes this, um, this series of games worth playing and good. So this is the Lumberjack. Gots. Oh, hey. A woodcutter. Oh, so he helps you expand your house. Yeah, you need like a thousand wood. <laughs> and like, oh, I'm sure. So much money. Hey, Karen's kind of cold. She's cool though. Yeah. But, uh. She doesn't, uh, she's not very talkative. Maybe she just doesn't dig you. Takes her a while to warm up to her. Mm. I don't know what she likes. Oh. 
Um, yeah. So, um, you know, if you were to think about, well, I, I guess like part of the goal of these Let's Plays is um, to spend, obviously to spend time with the game to get you know how to play well. So at this point in the stage, we don't necessarily have a ton of insight to provide about the quality of the game design. Rather, this is more of an opportunity for us to play through and make some observations about the game and uh, learn about it through play. These will probably be ready to harvest by the time uh, uh, the cucumbers I plant in between them have to come up, right? Yeah, that sounds likely. Uh, so that's going to be fine. Um, so, but this is an opportunity for the folks at home who are following along with the Let's Plays to sort of like chip in their own thoughts and contribute to the discussion. Which we do encourage you to do so in the comments below on the YouTube channel, as well as uh, over our Facebook page and on Twitter, and in the live stream and whatnot. So, uh, oh man, he's already tired. Yeah, he's been running Ooh. around, and I guess you do lose endurance harvesting as well, right? Ah, uh, yes, I suppose that's true. Um, and so, uh, the more people who participate, the better the discussion is, because the more variety, a better variety of perspectives we have, and there's also a greater chance for people to make observations or draw insight from the game that we couldn't have on our own. <sighs> Zach, go away. Oh, man. Yeah, we're gonna have to go uh, take five in the sauna. Yeah. In the hot springs. Um, and, yeah. So, um... So beyond that, we also have a podcast at the end of the month where me and my compadre, Brooke Jensen, who is a game developer who uh, lives out on the, the left coast of Canada in Vancouver. He, it's the west coast. Left coast. This is a hot tip. Um, uh, I, I'm going to say left. Okay. Um, uh, no, no GameCube. This is our, our beloved Age, your wife. age goddess. Um really like that turnip. Yeah, well, it's, it's homemade. <laughs> um, he works uh, at Next Level Games, who you might know from uh, Luigi Bryant Mansion, Dark Moon, the 3DS, as well as Metroid Prime Federation Force, uh, and the Punch-Out remake for the Wii U. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't on all those projects, he was just on uh, the first two that I mentioned. Anyhow, um, we... Uh, but he was there. For, for Punch Out? Yeah. No. no. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, he, he was not involved. Lies. At all. He was not involved even one bit. Uh, that's fine. We'll give him all the credit. Okay. Brooke Jensen single handedly made Punch Out. Amazing. And he voice acted everything. That's impressive. That's yeah. Very, that's a lot of talent. And those look like animations. They were just Brooke? Yeah. And it's not even like they mo capped Brooke. Like wow. that's just that's him. That's just him. In that's actual video. Yeah. Amazing. Video footage of Brooke just dancing. I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, he's way more talented than I ever could have expected. Yeah, he's way more talented than anybody. Anybody you would think. Yeah. There we go. Um, I guess we don't have a lot of uh, Harvest Moon energy left, so. Not really. Maybe we'll go track down that stupid dog. And I mean, Domville, our lovely, faithful pal. Our lovely pet. We love. So you can whistle to him. There he is. Oh, yeah. Aww, just hanging out. He wasn't doing a very good job of, silly puppy. of healing. <laughs> oh. He's just a puppy. Mm, no excuses. I oh, guess you, you could like put him in your house. Keep track of him. Oh yeah, let's do that. You are now an indoors dog. <laughs> I like you how... You live here now. Yeah, that's pretty good. You, no matter what orientation you are, he preserves the orientation that you picked him up from. Yeah. I wonder, yeah, I wonder why. There's an explanation for that. Oh, so sleepy. What a sleepy puppy. So I think even at 10, the bar is closed. Yeah. Slow town. It's, you know. Mineral town is, is not very bumping. No, not really. All right, let's turn it into today. All right, what are we going to accomplish today? Um, We're going to try to get rich. Oh, it's raining! Oh! So that means we don't need to uh, water our crops. That's sweet. Our crabs. It's gonna go a long way. So how much money do we have? I think we. I think today is the day that Ooh. 
Yeah. Rolling in it. We're doing good. I think today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Uh-huh. No, uh... Is that what you mean? I think the grocery store or the general store is closed, so you can't actually buy any more crops. That sounds right. Because I, what I want to do is start to plant grass so that we can mm, feed... Get some animals. Or feed our chattel. Yeah. Um, but, uh... No turnip for the harvest got today. Yeah, yeah, we, we only had one. one. We can't. We can't spare. We can't no, spare. Can't, can't spare. Can't, can't we're on a really no, tight budget. Sorry. Um. So. I mean, you know, well, there's only so far your love will go. And it's not. It's not 100 percent turnip. No. Hey dog. Hey. <laughs> Pay our dog tax. Um. So maybe it's time. Oh, because I know that in order to upgrade tools. We have to uh, get some copper and oh, stuff. Oh, let's go do some mining then. Yeah, we as well. Go to do the mineral town portion of today's program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got nothing in our thing. So it'll be slow going at first because we don't have uh, any inventory space. We can only carry back three things. Oh, what are we carrying with us? Uh, we, we only have three bag spaces. Right. So nothing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, the tools and the uh, field items occupy a different spot in your inventory. Yes, that I am aware of. Yeah. We'll hold on to these. We can give that to our gnome friend. I guess that's another thing we should get working on, is trying to... Uh, yeah, get some... Convert... Conscript some labor. Yeah. So that's scrap, so we're just gonna ditch it. That's copper, I think. That's scrap. That's silver. Oh, yeah, and that's it. That's yeah. all the room you have. Yeah, but a copper, I think we can use to upgrade our uh, upgrade our tools. So we're gonna hold. We're gonna throw the silver in the chipping bin when we get back. And then... I thought you said chipping bin. <laughs> yeah, we're going to chip. Just chip it away. We're going to grab D Domville. Chipper. And we're going to chip Domville. Oh. Uh, it's too expensive to feed. We can't keep him. <laughs> um, I think I've got an item box inside that I can keep. Nope. It's tough like my copper in, right? I don't know if that's true. Yeah, it's not a tool. So, I don't know. Oh no. So I want to upgrade our watering can first because it's the biggest pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it tells you how many squares of water we have left. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hilarious way to measure water. It's very funny. I guess maybe investigate uh, what it takes to upgrade your water can, watering can. And see whether or not we can sell it because it's not like the copper is so rare that we can't get more. Yeah. It's locked. Oh. No, there's not. Oh, it's not Thursday. There's not open yet, so we're gonna go. Uh, oh, it's not ten. Oh, it's potpourri. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, we told us that already. <laughs> Aww. Aww, it's sexism. The yeah. patriarchy is alive. Oh no. I've been playing uh, Bravely Default, and um, there's one character in it who's really sexist, um, and the. Your party is made up of two men and two women, mm -hmm. and uh, the man is one of the men. Ring a bald is always just like being this, just the sleaziest. Like, sleazy how? Like, anytime you go a place, the first one thing he wants to know is where the ladies are, yeah. and like every world threatening event to him is just something to leverage in order to attract more women to him. Okay. Um, but. Uh, the uh, other female characters are always just basically just like stomping on his uh, arches, <laughs> being right. like, "No more talking, <laughs> stop it." <laughs> um, so I don't know how I feel about it because at once he's uh, one of the characters in the game is completely deplorable and gross. Right, but then but they do call him out as gross and have like the female leads, um, you know, who are competent in their own right. Like, he's still a competent and capable character and is like helpful. But, but he's he, also gross. He's also just kind of like a creep. Right. Um, whereas, you know, the female characters, like, just have to put up with some nonsense on account of the fact that they're women. So in, is that is that just kind of like what the world is like? I think that might be a bit of a reflection of real life. 
I know um, that I certainly have to put up with some nonsense. Yeah, but I mean, I'm trying to escape to a world of fantasy. Right. <laughs> so. So, in your world of fantasy, the ideal one, just I wouldn't. Yeah. Like yeah. this dynamic would not enter into it at all. Yeah, I wouldn't have. You to... would just have female characters and male characters, and no one would be gross. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. would. They wouldn't necessarily have to make. I wouldn't have my characters have to put up with just like weak, crappy comments. Right, like none of the female characters would have to roll their eyes. Yeah. One of the characters is uh, married to a giant crystal. Sure. Because she's uh, like a, a priestess of a crystal temple. Okay. So like, I don't know if the crystal is her husband or her wife or what the what the deal is there, but... Yeah, I mean, we don't have to use the gender binary. <laughs> yeah, it's a crystal. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of funny. Because mm -hmm. it's like... Oh, cults. Yeah. But she is legitimately married to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, she describes it as her partner. Uh, well, like... she says that she was married to it. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, she just straight up says it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. But, uh, anyhow. So <laughs> it's some, stuff like that. I, I know, like, I think you have to do, like, the, all the wait and see kind of thing. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Still, I mean, it's not, it's not ideal. It's not what you necessarily want. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess if it does get to the point where it's, like, actually ruining the fun, yeah, then that is a valid criticism. I think that, like, these games usually do a pretty good job of displaying, like, quaint life in such a way that it's not, like, actually gross, but just kind of, like, tacky. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, you can't marry any of the men. Right. And in more friends of Muriel, Muriel Town, <laughs> more friends of Maria World. Right. Um, you can't, uh, you can't marry a toad. No, in more friends of Mineral Town, you can't marry a woman and whatnot. So that's right. a thing. But um, yeah, I don't know. When, uh, when did this game come out? Twenty oh two oh three, two oh oh three, two thousand three. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of Japanese games are very uh, conservative about that stuff. Where did my axe go? Right there. Um, where, like, they don't yeah. put that stuff on display, so they'll have, like, characters that are, like, ludicrous mm -hmm. and flamboyant and larger than life and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, you, you can't be, you can't be gay. Right. Um, and then I guess you've got other games like Fire Emblem where it's, like, the opposite. It's just, like, eugenics the game, where you can have, like... You can, like, force biological sisters to get married. Oh. It's weird. I don't like that. Yeah, you shouldn't. Why is that a thing? Because it's creepy. Ugh. And people want to play their creepy eugenics game. That's pretty creepy, though. I don't know. Sorry to any Fire Emblem fans out there, but uh, I can't. I really can't get on board with the uh, eugenics simulator. So, like, I mean, like, I've not played the game. Yeah. So I can't make any real judgments, but that sounds not... Yeah. Nice. So I mean, it's it's of interest because this game has romance options, so to speak, as well, right? Like you play a character yeah. who falls in love and get starts a family, right? But one of the things that's different about this game is you inhabit a, a single character whose story is your own, whereas um, in the oh, you get sick if you work too hard in the rain. So we're gonna stop oh, now. Yeah. Whereas in. Um, uh, Oh yeah, we didn't. Oh, we didn't go to the shop. Oh, right. Uh, we probably still have time though. Run. Go, go. Whereas in Fire go Emblem, go Um, all of the characters have their own storylines and plots, and are by all rights like fleshed out, fully realized characters. Mm. And then you make them mate. It's weird. That is weird. Because you think if they're um, real people with their own volitions and their own story, that you thanks that you can't Maybe. just determine their fate like that right I guess the game's called Farm of Fate but whatever yeah it just feels weird yes I do need something yeah maybe you have to come back in I know that uh Maybe you just hit the time it's supposed to close, or... No, no. I think that with some of the uh, shops and whatnot, if you don't actually buy the thing the first time you come in, uh -huh. you come back. Yeah, I really 
do you need something? Uh, or maybe it's like the first day. I remember there being something like that. Here you go. We'll just give it to him. Oh, just thanks, buddy. Just gotta get that out of my inventory. All right. Well, he like he seemed to like it. Yeah, it's fine. So his he doesn't have a heart on his. Uh... You can't make him like you. <laughs> you can make him like you, but it's just you, you know. You can't woo him. Yeah, but he also doesn't have, like, a, a visible bar that tells you how much he likes him. Right. So, I mean, like, it's understandable why, for, like, gameplay reasons, they have that in this. Where, like, there's actually, like, a graphic representation of how much the characters uh, are interested in you. Uh, but it's a little, a little cheap. <laughs> I, <think it's, laughs> I always found that a little weird. It's kind of understandable. Yeah, I mean, how else are you gonna... but, by the way that, that, by the way that they speak and the way that they act. Yeah, I guess. I I guess I just wonder. You know, I think maybe it'll become a parent, right? Yeah. Well, maybe not, but. Yeah, this game is a little bit more primitive than sort of like modern games that use like romance or whatever like character interactions. Like I know Brooke talks about the way it's handled in Drake. Oh, uh, Harris. Yeah, Harris. This constable, he's always uh, on duty in the exact same spot. Yeah, doing nothing. Um, but uh, they make their relationships like not necessarily apparent, and it's just the like inflection in their voice and the voice acting and that kind of stuff that lets you know how what the characters you think about them. Yeah. And this game is, I think, a lot more straightforward in its aims. Yeah. Than one of those games, which is fine. In this game, it doesn't try to like present like a depth of the interaction between characters, or even like, I mean, you, if you look at our character and think about how well the artists have defined his characteristics, <laughs> right? Like he's intentionally left like a little vague. Yeah. Um, you see that there's lots of space to, you know, impose your own ideas about the character's personality on top of him. Um, and so, in certain ways, that uh, that makes the way that romance is handled sort of like suitable because it leaves more of that game interaction up to your imagination and less actually just super defined right because i think inevitably you would end up falling short given the visual fidelity and the amount of space on cart to write novels and really like how much written material the audience is expecting from playing this game right it's not this is not a game where you listen to and read a ton of text, right? Yeah. It's not really that thing. Um, so I think it's appropriate, but at the same time, it's kind of funny to laugh at the heart in the corner. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to wrap up our third episode of the 2-Bit Game Club's Let's Play of Friends of Mineral Town for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, where can people find 2-Bit Game Club on the internet, Allie? Uh, on Facebook. Yeah. On Twitter. On Twitch, on uh, YouTube, on the podcasting networks. Wait, not networks. What do you call them? Uh, places where the podcasts are. Internet? Yeah. <laughs> All at 2-Bit Game Club. Absolutely. So thanks very much for joining us on the program. Uh, we will ba be back on the live stream soon for more Let's Plays of uh, Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town.